Hello and welcome to this webinar about University West Business School. My name is Ebba Thoralsen and I work as a communications officer here at University West and at International Office. With me today I have Kristina Johansson and you are Associate Professor and Research Director here at University West. Welcome. Thank you. And you will talk about you will talk about, of course, our business school in general and a little bit about the programs we have here. But you will also talk about our profile in work integrated learning as we have here at University West. And during Christina's presentation, you're more than welcome to send questions in the chat and we will take them up uh, as we go along if there are crucial to the presentation or afterwards we will have a Q&A portion where we will talk more about studying here, about University West and of course if you have any specific questions. So I will start with welcoming you Kristina again and enjoy the presentation. Thank you very much. So I'm all, <laughs> you have already introduced me actually, but I'm also, I'm the deputy uh, chancellor you can say for the Department of School and Business. Uh, here at University West, and I will go into the programs a bit later. Uh, but I think mainly why I'm here is because I've been here for about almost 25 years doing work in the way they're learning research and education, and has been part of building the brand of work in the way learning. So now you think that I am pro working to great learning, super duper pro working to great learning is the best. That is not actually the truth because I'm also a researcher in working to great learning. But Enough is enough about that. I will show you a presentation and I hope that you have very clever questions to ask me later on because I like to, to discuss this with you as presum presumptive students. So let's go. So what is work integrated learning at our department, the School for Business and IT? This is, you can see at the slideshow. So, <laughs> We, we have two programs, master programs that is just up and running, so I will talk a bit later about them. I'm heavily invested in them, so it's interesting, I think. Then we have uh, Work Integrated Political Studies, what we call VIPs, uh, they are also up and running. And we also have IT and Management, that's a one-year program. International Business, another one-year program. And Finance, one-year program. At the bachelor level, we actually have a whole program in English that is more or less into politics, political science, international politics. What's interesting is that we just created what we call Competency Academy West. It's actually, you can call it an own unit at our department where you as, as, as a contractor can come and say, okay, I want an international short course in leadership for three credits and you can buy it from us, so to speak. You cannot buy the grades, <laughs> but you can buy the course and the knowledge in the course, of course. So this is what we offer right now. We are constantly moving. Right now I'm planning another uh, master program that is just in work integrated learning, uh, but that is to come in a couple of years. We also have a lot of masters in engineering. I know that you're not here to listen about them, so I will not say more, but I will do that. This a bit of advertisement, advert, what, what do you call it? Advert, advert, no, no, I'm stuck on the word. Please help me. Reclam. Advertisement. Advertisement. Uh, and that web webinar will be in November. So. Now I will go into what is work integrated learning. As I said, this is my profile area, both in education and research. This is a pedagogical philosophy. From the beginning, it was a pedagogical model. It was actually what we call cooperative education. It started in 1906 when the dean, Hermann Schneider, he said uh, he, was, uh, he was working at Cincinnati University. At that time, it was an agricultural area. It meant that we have all farmers there. Uh, and the farmers, of course, you know, they didn't have the time or effort or the money to study in a, in a, in a brand new university setting. But Hermann Schneider, he was thinking, what if we can make a logistic so we can get the farmers into the university to study for half a year, get out and do the harvest and seeding and all of that stuff uh, and work for half a year and earn the money for the whole family and then get back. So his idea was to prolong the ordinary 
education and and do like this sandwich <laughs> sandwich course making so i do some courses i do some work i do some courses i do some work this was purely a log logistic way to get a new cohort of students into the university it has nothing to do with pedagogical philosophy or ideology it was just a way of bringing new students into cincinnati university the board of the board the, the board of Cincinnati said, "Oh no, you're crazy. We cannot do this. We want the young students. We want them to come from the cities out to this rural area to study at our university." So he actually applied three times, three years in a row. He tried to make this happen, and the tr I think I don't know, but I, I guess that the third time they said, "Okay, let's go. You're going to visit us until we get a yes. So let's do this." But it's your head that is rolling, not ours. And 2022 co-op, co uh, or in some sense, work integrated learning is, is one of the largest models in, in North America, in Asia, and it's growing in Europe. So it actually worked. So that is what I call the birth of the modern work integrated learning profile. But as I see, yes, you can see on the slide, it's a business idea from the beginning. It's a logistic way of solving the student problem. It's not about the pedagogy. But at University West, we have since the start 30 years ago, we have worked with the eye in will. The integration of knowledge and competence within different contexts. So what we're doing is that even if we provide a co-op educational model, we work with integration and reflection from these different contexts. And this is how we are actually separated out from the other university that has cooperative education as a pedagogical model. We have it in all areas at University West. We also have it as a national assignment. It means that the national Swedish governments give us money every year to promote work integrated learning in education and research. And we are the only university since 2002 that gets this money. We also have it from the first course at the university program that would say on the A level, the first level, up to PhD education. It means that we produce doctors in work integrated learning as the only university in the world. And right now we have a big project calling the Kalehu project, which of course I'm involved too, too as well. But we're trying to build a quality framework that is a framework in work integrated learning, not a quality assurance for everything you do, but how do we do this in will? So work integrated learning is our profile, it's our pedagogical ID, and some people say it's in our DNA. Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't go that far. But we talk a lot about it. <laughs> so here is, <clears throat> here is a model that we actually built almost 15 years ago, but it's still valid because this is how we in the research environment of Lina look at work integrated learning. It is multidisciplinary. It means that we have researchers from all departments at the university and even from the library <laughs> participant, uh, participating in research in work integrated learning. It could be about the educational philosophy. It could also be learning at work. It could be about new models of learning. It could be also about logistics, so it could be from ranging all over, so to speak. But it is, LENA stands for learning in and for the new workplace. So it's all about preparing for a new workplace, a new learning at work, to try to understand as a new student, you are sitting there, you're going to get out in four or five years as a new, with new knowledge and skills. And to be a bit provocative, don't think that you will have the same job when you're entering in 20 years. You will not. The working labor market is changing constantly and rapidly. And lifelong learning is here to stay. So you will, try, you will need to do courses when you're working and you will probably reskill one once or twice in your lifetime. And I'm talking about working lifetime now. So this is what we're working with actually. Upskilling, reskilling, competency development and knowledge in a work integrated learning perspective, of course. We work with strategies and infrastructures for how we can collaborate and work with the society. And this is not only the companies or the communities or the municipalities, we work with all of them. And we also have 
this, what I told you about the national assignments, the money we get for that is actually for this, this box that's called Models and Methods for Higher Education. So that, that money is, is marked for, for developing new work integrated learning methods, and new cohorts, a new way of distributing this knowledge. For instance, online, uh, asynchron, synchron learning, etc. But with work integrated learning in the, in the, as a main focus, of course. And then at the, at the bottom of the picture, we have will as a pedagogical philosophy. And sometimes I put ideology. Um, and you can discuss that kind of difference because some people at University of West think this is normative, it's a normative way of thinking. And I say, isn't all education normative? Probably. Isn't all child raising up normative? Isn't all pedagogy normative? Uh, so, so work integrated learning has a normative, ideal way of thinking, of course. But we also need to scrutinize it and, and problematize it and see how we can develop it. That's in our, all of our interest. And I'm talking and talking, and my time is soon up. So we get to what we call, what I call the example from the master education level. So one year ago, one year and two months ago, I got the assignment to Kiki, can't you create two new master programs in working to way learning? And we have done some kind of, of, of scouting around in the area, the regional area and the international areas. Yeah. Where is the knowledge gaps right now? What do we need to educate for? What kind of work life do we need to educate for? And qu quite soon, we, we, we actually got to the conclusion that leadership and digitalization in the changing world is is a heavily important way of doing it. And when you add the aspect of work integrated learning, it means that you're not just studying about, you're also studying in a special format. So it means that we are creating and educating changing agents. So this is not a, a, an education you want to go if you just want to sit in your own chambers, read for yourself and do uh, exams. This is about collaboration, this is about problematizing, this is about working with wicked problems, trying to solve the unsolvable, finding strategies, plans, visions in how to work to make the world and the workplace a better place to be in a changing world. So that is, that is, this is the basic pedagogical foundation and idea in both programs. So one is in leadership and digitalization, and one is in sustainable development. And we all know that we, need, we all need to work against this SDN goals and, and trying to create a more sustainable world for our, our children. Uh, this is no news for anyone. So these two programs were created one, almost one and a half years ago, and they are up and running right now. It is a major challenge to have an international cohort with students from all backgrounds. Because you can be an engineer, you can be a nurse, you can be a doctor, you can be a teacher, you can be a boss at the company uh, with economics in your background and you can apply for the same program. So we have students from all over the place, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> both regarding where they come from, but also what kind of educational background they have. <coughs> I'm sorry. So this is... This is the major challenge, but also the main, I think the main, the main profit of doing this, because you get so many perspectives uh, into the course for free. So it's both a challenge, but it's also a, a very good win in it. So how about work integrated sustainable development? We have around 20 students from all over the world running a, in this program right now. Uh, and it's campus based with all that comes with that. Uh, and it's in English, of course. Uh, we cannot force them to learn Swedish in two months and then start in Swedish. So it's, of course, in English. Um, and um, we work from these kinds of, this is actually applying to both programs because they have more or less the same pedagogical design, but they are in different uh, aspects of, of learning. So we talk about fear and practice, we talk about education and pedagogy, we talk about learning in work life, and we talk about learning as collaboration. 
And what we notice right now is that depending on where people come from, some of them has never done a group work. So it's, it's like they come to a new country, they will study in work integrated learning and they will start to work in groups. So if you're sitting out there, this is a major challenge, but the students are actually liking it. Of course, it's new to them, so they need to adapt to new circumstances, but they like it. And many of them has, has, has expressed appreciation of, oh, wow, I can learn from my co-students, not only from the teachers. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. So there are different learning occurring in the same classroom. You learn about, the, of course, the subject of sustainable development or leadership. You learn in how to approach a wicked problem that you design for yourself. You have to identify the wicked problem and then you solve it together or try to find way of solving it together with peers. Interesting, I promise you. So this is just for the ones that's interesting. And if you want to, of course, you can get the slides later on. I can email them to Ebba and she can send them to you. But this is how, how you do the program, so to speak. Uh, I will not get into every course, but what's interesting is in semester three, that is what we call an elective semester. So it means that you can study 15 credits in our university and 15 credits wherever you want to, as long as it goes into the umbrella of your master program and is on the right level. And then we also have what's important and interesting, of course, is the master thesis in the end that is the, the crown jewel in your education when you are finished with your master thesis. That is a challenge. But fun. And when it comes to leadership in digitized organizations, it's the same, it's the same. There is motives and ideas of this different program. When it comes to sustainable development, I think it's pretty clear. It has to do with a sustainable world, right? When it comes to leadership, it is mostly directed to what we call Industry 4.0. And some people are talking about industry 5.0. We didn't, we didn't get there when we did this application, so maybe we need to rewrite this. But today in research, we're also talking about industry 5.0, which is the next level of this, this huge transformation that industry or company world are, are, are living right now. When it comes to more agile and flexible way of working, for instance, when it comes to reskilling and upskilling, and when it comes to more human interaction values. So... Even though it doesn't say here, we also work with Industry 5.0, of course. What we can identify from the region, the companies in the region and, and, and the literature, of course, the scientific literature, of course, because we read that as well, is that the leadership role is challenged. Being a leader or a boss 10 years ago, it was quite easy, actually. Uh, it was quite more in the less in the same way to be a leader. You could be more of this agile leader and letting people do the, the thinking and the decision together. We can be the traditional leader. <laughs> I'm telling you what to do, you will produce and you get your salary. Today we don't really have one leadership. Almost every company works in hybrid organizations. They have staff all around the world with different cultures and backgrounds and expectations in how you should lead. And how do you actually lead by this channel that I'm pointing at you right now? How do you lead people and create engagement through that picture down in the right end of this screen? It's not that easy. Uh, so this is how, what we're talking about, how to be an agile leader, a flexible leader, an adaptable leader, and how to lead in this new work life. How, to, how can I make my co-workers to make me number one in the list of doing, do and don'ts, and, and not be on the, on the third one? I have a dog that barks. I have a kid coming home from school. I would just turn the camera off and tell her to go and get her yogurt. And I need to put out my dog. And I need to. And the leaders feel like they are constantly moving downstairs <laughs> in the step of do and don'ts. Uh, and it's, it's quite frustrating. So before when they were at work and they were in the conference room, the leader had them in the same room and could distribute and see where they were going. And if they were with them, now they can't.
So how do I lead in that kind of circumstances? How do I create engagement and loyalty, maybe? So that's something we're discussing quite much. And my time is running up. And this is how leadership in digitalized organization actually looks when it comes to the courses. And it's the same in semester three. You pick 15 credits and you have 15 credits to pick wherever you want in the world or stay in beautiful University West and read the other courses, of course. And we have courses in WIPs, for instance, and there are the masters that you also can choose from. So there are some flexibility built in in the program. Okay, we are here. So, can you hear me? Yes, so uh, yes. we have <laughs> so we have Maddie with us behind the scenes looking at if we have any questions. Maddie, have we gotten any questions yet? Okay, great. But then we will go on to our Q&A portion. So work integrated learning is obviously advanced. You can both do research, but you can also experience in your everyday life here as a student. Uh, can you give some examples of how I, if I were a student here, how would I experience work integrated learning in my everyday life? Mm. Interesting. I asked Ebba to, to do some questions and surprise me. <laughs> Since I have been here for 20 years, I got most, most questions, but I actually didn't get, I haven't got that yet. So good, <laughs> good, good job. Uh, I think you can meet it in a different level. You will meet it definitely by all the emails sending out and all the invitations to come to this and this and this. You will meet it from this kind of address. I, I need to work on that word. Advertisement. Thank you. <laughs> I need to work on that word. I have some words that doesn't actually work with my Swedish fang. Uh, so, but there are these kind of brackets everywhere. Our students go to work uh, at our place. Our students get relevant job. 83.7% of our students get relevant job after the education. And all of this, we say, has to do with the work and grade and learning profile. Because it is about educating for some relevancy later on without losing the, uh, the values of higher education. And, and being uh, scientifically critic, uh, critical and, and have this independence as a researcher, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Probably they will meet it in different kind of task assignment in their education. It can be that they should do a case study. It can be that they should go out and pick data from, from what some people call reality. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say reality, I would say the practices out there, the different businesses and practices, because we actually have a reality in higher education as well. <laughs> we are not separated from a reality. Um, and bring them back and try to connect them with the theories. So work integrated learning for me are and should be when you connect different competencies, skills, uh, to two different contexts. That will say, what have I learned, experienced here? And what can I learn and experience here? And when I put them together, what have I learned? So the reflection part, the I, the integration, is the important thing. I will say that the best student is the one, when they are in the practice out there, when they are reflecting on the theoretical models when they are out there. So some people will say, okay, this is work integrated learning. I have a guest lecture here today. I say, no, it's not. It can be, but it depends on what the student does with that. To make that work into way learning, something must happen within the student's mindset, thinking, reflecting. Mm. I can provide a guest lecture, but I can also provide tools to do the reflection. Mm. So I think guest, guest lectures is an uh, interesting example because that's usually what people think about when talking about work integrated learning, that uh, companies come to the students. Uh, is there any other way companies actually come here except guest lectures? Mm, oh yes, we have, we have what we call short courses. Uh, that is actually the other uh, department of engineering science. They are really good at that. That is when you meet together with the business representatives in a small room and you're together trying to do some kind of mapping. What are the competence, lacks of competences and skills in the region right now? And what do we need to do on an advanced level to raise that? So a company, company gets uh, are, are competitive 
uh, in this global arena of, of because they are doing cutting edge research there, so they need to be in in the top of the class, so to speak. Uh, and they're doing it together, and it means that the business are actually in the design process from the beginning. So it's not just that they're bringing a company in. The company is co-working in the course from the start to the end. Mm. Uh, and that is an extraordinary way of working, I think. That is actually working to way learning as it should be, always. So uh, speaking of um, industry and University West, like having a close relation, you mentioned two programs specifically that are pretty new to University West and we usually market our programs as uh, they are um, developed in close contact with industry. Uh, would you say that this is the case with these programs as well? Uh, yes I know because when we did the mapping on what kind of competences and skill that was lacking we had that kind of discussion then. Uh, after then we have been more of in a consolidation phase. We need to get this up and running and there's a lot of, of work doing inside the house to get it function admis administratively. So uh, I would say that the company in this case will come in a bit later on. Uh, when it's time for the master thesis, when it's time uh, for the courses that has more, uh, what should you say, more when we're sending the students out to do the data collection. Mm. I know with some courses in, uh, that coming next semester for these two new programs, we have the founders of different tools that they can use. Uh, they are in there as guest lecturers. So we have invited the, the top notch <laughs> in how these two different tools are created in how you, for instance, can measure sustainability and stuff like that. So yes, they are, they are, we are close with them but not in the same level as these short courses. Mm -hmm. because, and it's, of course, easier when you have a short course that's run for three weeks to have this instant, in, intense relationship. But when it comes to two years master, it's not so easy to keep that, that, that constantly running. Mm -hmm. Because it's very resource-taking, of course, in time, time-consuming. Yeah. Important, but time-consuming. Mm. So another example usually mentioned when talking about work integrated learning is the possibilities for students to have internships at other companies and in the real world, as you said before. Uh, is that a possibility not only on the two new programs, but uh, on programs in general in our business school? I would say there's also a yes and no, because if you talk about internship in the sense that we are having a lot of companies uh, and we are giving them out to different students, that's not the case. But we have courses, for instance, this field-based field project course that is in the elective semester where they can choose to study, but they need to find the company to do it in, so to speak, to do the research in. Uh, and we will provide, if they don't find no one, we can, of course, help them. We'll do everything so they get it. But we are not, it's not like in the teacher program or in the cl clinical programs when we have a long list and we are sending students out. Here is, since we also have students from diff all different backgrounds and cultures and educational backgrounds, we, we cannot really know where to put the students because there are their interests that should be, be steering where they want to do the, this field course base, mm. project course, for instance. Uh, it would be wrong if I would send them someone with an economical background to a kindergarten or something like that. You know, it, it wouldn't be, a, mm. a, 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 probably not be a match in heaven. Mm -hmm. It could be, but it would probably not be. So it should be their, their, their former educational background or their new interest mm. that is, is steering where they go. Of course, the teacher team are here to help. So, um, so the possibility is there for everyone, but there also has to be an interest as as a student to also be interested in actually applying and searching for a company that would fit my interests. And they will not even apply. There is no application. They will turn to a company and say, hi, <laughs> I'm Christina. I'm reading a 15 credit course. <laughs> I will do this assignment. And if I come to you, I will look at this and this and this. And your win is that you get my report <laughs> afterwards that can help you develop your company. Hmm. So we don't, don't forget that we are actually training entrepreneurs, innovators, changing driving agents, they should be able to do this when they have studied a year, to take this kind of contact. Great. 
And then I will go on to ask you a little bit more specific questions about our business school. We call it School of Business, Economics and IT, but business school for short. It's, it takes less time. Um, can you describe the student environment at your department? Oh, oh, okay. It was <laughs> it was 30 years ago I was a student. So at that time, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I think that we... In, um, since I'm one of the bosses, this will sound like I'm promoting my own, uni my, my own unit, and I'm, I will do that now. Be aware, because there is a good, there is a good atmosphere. The students usually, usually, I say, when I talk to students, they're usually very satisfied with how they are, are approached by teachers and other peers and students. Of course, there are conflicts. There, are my, you don't like the grading sometimes, etc. They're, they're normal problems. They are always there. But I think the atmosphere is good, and what we're doing now right now is that I'm actually sending out an email to all the international students and the exchange students and invite them for a Swedish cooking night. And that is the institution that are treating them with this because we think that they should feel welcome. They have been here for five, six weeks now. They have just landed in Sweden. They have their apartment. They are studying here at campus. So welcome to do some, some Swedish meatballs mm. with me and mingle with the other students. So we try to do these small initiatives to make the students feel more at home. So University West should actually be the second home. That is, that is what we work for. We can do more, probably, yes. But, but we are trying to work in that direction. We, I think that that's where Sweden and University West in particular are pretty different, that we have such an informal environment between teachers and students. It sounds like you agree. Yes, and you heard my, my wording before. <laughs> I mean, yes, probably sometimes too informal. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have a lot of international students at the business school, would you say? No, but we're getting there because we are starting new master programs and one year programs. So we are growing. Mm. I think that we are we have enough. It's not that. But I think what we need to work more with actually is to get the Swedish students to get out there. And, and discover the world. So we have a problem getting our really good students to get to Spain or Africa or Asia, whatever, to, to see and, and experience a new way of learning mm -hmm. and being in a new society and culture. Oh my gosh, what you learn a lot. In the same way our potential future students will experience Sweden. Exactly. They, they, you will learn a lot. I have not studied abroad, but I have been a guest professor abroad mm. in a couple of times being living in another country for a couple of months and just learn the, the culture and the way they're working and how they're thinking and and what what is the good values for them. Mm. It's so bra. It's so bra. It's so good. That was a Swedish word. Bra. <laughs> good. But uh, so in our uh, master programs, they are taught in English, of course. Uh, are there both Swedish and international students mixing? Yes, but we have very few Swedish students. Hmm. Uh, Swedish students, I don't know if they're a bit comfortable of themselves. <laughs> I'm looking here at some Swedish people in the room. Uh, they tend to, to apply for the programs because we have master programs in leadership as well in Swedish. So they mm -hmm. are applying for them, not to us. But we have two students in one of the programs and one in the other one. Okay. So we have three. <laughs> So we don't only have master's programs that is taught in English, we also have a bachelor's program. One bachelor program uh, and then uh, uh, three or four, I had that in one of the slides, I think it's four one year masters. Mm. What yeah. we in Sweden call magistrar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned before that a lot of students coming here have never worked in group projects before. No. And, and I've heard from students that are here currently that it's really fun and it's a great way to collaborate and meet new people. But do we have any others, uh, other specific ways of learning here that you feel are um, not so common internationally, except like sitting and listening to a lecture? Yes, we, we, yes, 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 yes. You just press the button. <laughs> there are major differences in how you how you study in different cultures and there should be. The, the, I don't say what's wrong or right, I will never do, but I will say that in Sweden we have national goals from the government. So 
if we are going to, to have the permit to do master and PhD and, 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 and also bachelors, there are national goals for all of them. And it is to be a democratic citizen, it is to be critical thinking, it is to be in an independent person, and some more goals. But not all countries has this. And you can, you, can, you, you can of course notice that in how they're writing their exams. So sometimes the exams are coming in and they are just descriptions of a phenomenon. Uh, in our case, it means that you need to be critically Exp critically reflect on them and give in critique, both positive and negative, and maybe use other authors to say, okay, Freud said this, but Jung actually said this, and my take on this is this. So you build your paper from your experience, the literature experience, and what comes out from it. And this is, this is a mindset or a traveling in the intellectual mind that you need to do if you haven't done it in your home country. Mm -hmm. In your, in your home country's educational system, I would say. Uh, nothing is wrong, nothing is right, but this is, this is what we are examining. And it could be good for, for the students to know that in advance, mm. that this is, this is what we are demanding. And not only we, the Swedish government. Mm. So we need to fulfill this. This is my job as a, a, a govern, governmental representative. Mm. <laughs> So yeah. we're slowly coming to an end, but I want to encourage you to ask any questions if you have any, and we will talk about them here. In the meantime, while well, you think about if you have any great questions, I will ask Christina a couple of last questions if there don't are going to pop up any others. But um, do you yourself teach? Yes, uh, I teach in every levels. Uh, I also have. Uh, uh, courses for, for people in different businesses. Right now I'm involved in a municipality that wants to develop work integrated learning as the value for the whole for the whole business. So I'm teaching all the bosses what work integrated learning could be in their business. Uh, and from that I have a master programs, I have PhD educational courses and I have bachelor courses. I have staff development. <laughs> you do it all. I do it all. <laughs> yes. What's the best part? Of teaching? Yeah. Maybe specifically international students then. Tricking people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm a pedagogue from the beginning and you know all education is normative and about manipulate... manipulate that is also a word. Help me. Manipulation? Yes. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, th that is also some, some kind of misunderstanding. We pedagogues try to manipulate people. That's not true. We actually try to be the tool or catalysator for other people to learn. So, so what was the question? Why I like it? And what is the best part about teaching international students? I would say all students because I don't actually differ them. Uh, the, the only difference is that I'm better in Swedish than in English. <laughs> uh, otherwise, the subject is more or less the same. But what I actually think is the most fun is when you're sitting with a stu student class or one single student, doesn't matter, and you have a long conversation and problematizing together and suddenly you can see that the famous coin Mm. drop down and you can see it in the eye something happening and I say oh Kiki I get it and I say I see you get it a eureka moment that is uh, that is so good to see <laughs> I just love that moment you mentioned that we don't have that many international students does that also mean that our class sizes are smaller can you say something yeah, about they are smaller in the international but we 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 have right now running, I think it's about 30 in one of them and 25 in the two new masters. In the WIPS program, I think it's about 25. We don't want classes bigger than 30 students on this level because this is on an advanced level. They come from different backgrounds and then they, they need the time with the, with the teachers. Mm. We don't teach traditionally three hours, you sit and, and learn, you sit and learn why I'm talking and transfer my knowledge to you. Mm. That is not working to way learning at all. That mm. is, and that is actually, I'm going to be normative and not a very good pedagogy. Uh, so that is not how we, we tend to do it. Mm. Of course, we have these three hours lectures as well, but they are quite few. Mm. And if you want things to happen and group collaboration and get people to start talking, you, could, you cannot have a class of 100. Mm. It's not possible to get that kind of climate. Mm. So we want around 30, 30, 25 to 40. Mm. A more intimate environment. Mm. 
And one last question, since I see you haven't asked any other. Maybe we're so clear about everything, Kristina. I don't think so. <laughs> I think they're shy. Maybe. But do you yourself live in the Trollhättan region? No, or in I live the... in Gothenburg. Oh, so it's pretty close then. The big city of Gothenburg. Okay, how long does it take you to get here? 38 minutes by train. Okay, it's pretty close. No, I, I'm sorry. The train doesn't de depart from my apartment. <laughs> so it takes 15 minutes, 38 minutes, 5 minutes, and then I'm on campus from door to door. Okay, so maybe then in a more in an hour. visitor's perspective, what is the best part about Trollhättan and maybe this region in general since you live so close? Trollhättan is, is, Trollhättan is, a, 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 you, uh, is from a Swedish perspective, Trollhättan is a, like a middle size small town so to speak uh, it they, they it's quite nice actually we have a square that's newly built we have a small creek running through the quite close to the city center and up there you have some restaurant builds close to it so you can sit there in summertime you shouldn't miss swedish summertime because swedish summer is the best i've been in, in, in a lot of countries during summertime, but the Swedish summer is the best. <laughs> Climate-wise, people are friendly. The rest of the year they are not so friendly. <laughs> I'm joking. But there's something happening in Sweden in summertime. They are relaxed, more intercontinental feeling. Uh, Trollhättan is a nice town. Uh, small to be in, but nice. They have seen they have what They have what you need. Mm. If you want more, like big theaters and opera houses and stuff. It is what you said, like mm. we just talked about. It's 40 minutes by train to Gothenburg. Mm. It's three three hours by train to Stockholm, mm. three hours to Malmö, um, four and a half, I think, to Copenhagen. So you're quite close to, to, to major cities as mm. well, if you want to experience them. But once in Trollhättan, you will stay in Trollhättan. Mm. That's great to hear. Thank you so much. And absolute last chance for any other questions. But so far, we have none. As I said, we've been so clear about everything, Kristina. But then I will just go on with telling you a little bit shortly about our next webinar that will be held the 22nd of November at the same time at Central European time, 2 o'clock. And it will be pretty much the same type of webinar but it will be about our engineering department so make sure to check that out and you can see it it's the same zoom link but i will update our calendar on the web page so you can find the link there as well and if you have any other questions something you forgot to ask or if you want any more specific information maybe from me maddie who has been helping you with the webinar or christina about work integrated learning feel free to send us an email and also if you want the presentation let me know, I can send it to you. So thank you so much everyone and thank you for checking in and also thank you so much Kristina for being a part of our webinar. Thank you. <laughs>